morning, boys and girls. You know what time it is? 10.30. Yeah. No, that's, it's actually about 10. <laughs> if, if, I, if I said it to the actual, what is that? Yes, a lot easier to tell time when it's 7.30, anyhow, yeah. yeah. You guys know how to read this clock, though? You're doing pretty well with that, yeah. How about, how about if we do this way? What is that? Oh. How about that way? <laughs> how many of you know how to do time a lot better with the digital? <laughs> yeah. And when I was a kid, this is how we learned to tell time. We had clocks like this instead of digital, where the digits are there on the, the cell phones. You know how it says what time it is on the cell phones? You know, it's a digital clock that way. But in our reading from Romans, it says this about time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. <coughs> the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So it's time to wake up. <coughs> no, it's time to wake up. We want to wake up because we're in the new church year. This is the season of Advent. The season of Advent, the Light family helped us to, to get things started with the Advent wreath and the Advent candles. How wonderful. Okay? But there are three different Advents that we celebrate. You know what the word Advent means? No, nope. the word Advent means coming. Okay? The Advent means coming. So we celebrate three different comings. Of whom? <coughs> yeah, of Jesus, his coming. The first coming was when? He came. Oh, yeah, hope is the first candle, that's right. Okay? And that first coming of Jesus is what we celebrate at Christmas time with the baby Jesus, right? He comes as a baby, he comes in the flesh. That's a celebration that we look forward to, and we celebrate that at Christmas. Okay? And then. We have the coming that he is always coming to us in his word and sacraments. He comes to us in the sacrament of holy baptism. He comes to us in the sacrament of holy communion and in the good news of the gospel, the Bible, that he comes to us. And then there's one more coming that we celebrate. What is that coming? Yeah, when he comes back, the second coming of Christ Jesus. He will return here on earth and all people who are uh, alive will be here and all those people who have died already will be brought back to life Okay, at that second coming of Jesus. And so there's three advents or three comings that we look for and celebrate even now in this advent season. Right? And we definitely want to be awake Okay, when Jesus comes again, you might sleep in on Christmas morning, okay, when we celebrate his birthday, but you want to be awake when Jesus comes again. <coughs> to be awake when he comes again is to be in faith with Jesus, to believe that he is Lord and Savior. You woke up early on Christmas morning, like at 3.30? Yeah. Wow. I don't know that uh, your parents want me to teach you that that's a good idea. <laughs> but Bella thinks it is, so yeah. I'm just going to throw it out there that way. <laughs> Didn't you go wake up mom and dad? Uh, we did. You did, okay. Did you? No. No? Oh. You were pretty excited for Jesus coming and celebrating his birthday, huh? Because that meant you get presents. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's be that excited for 
Jesus coming to us in his word and sacraments, and let's be that excited when he comes again, the second coming too. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we do thank you for your advent, for coming to us the first time that we celebrate at Christmas. We thank you for your advent, your coming to us in the word and sacraments, and we look forward to your coming in your second coming here on earth. Help us to be ready. Help us to be awake. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go back to your seats. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Almost did one up for adoption there. What do you think of that, Mike? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you are morning people? Really? So how come you guys worship at 10.30 instead of 8 o'clock? I mean, you know, we had a lot of morning people at 8 o'clock that said it would be okay if we did a 7 o'clock service. Does that mean we can bump everything back an hour you know, earlier an hour? We can do 7 o'clock and then 8.15 to 9.15 for Sunday school, 9.30. We'll bump back to 8.30 and we'll do Sunday school early. You guys aren't so much morning people now, are you? Oh, yeah. That's all right. When, uh, when do you get up? You get up early in the morning? I know Ben does. Ben's up before, before the rooster's crowing. Yeah. Anybody else that, that early morning before the rooster? A couple others here or there? Yeah. How many of you would rather sleep till like 10 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> At least you're honest. There's nothing wrong with that. How many of you do sleep till 10 o'clock in the morning? How many of you are sleeping right now? Yeah, yeah. Wake up, Kevin. Wake up. Yeah, it's time to wake up. There is something that helps some people for waking up, and, and maybe this commercial will help you to know what that is. Uh, how many of you remember the Folgers commercial? And uh, something to do what? You know, something waking up is... The best part of waking up is, ah, oh, you guys got it, perfect. It's almost the same as on the screen. But if you'll just cancel that stuff off the screen at this point, Al, they'll stop watching that and they might listen to me. Because if you keep playing up there, I'll sit here and watch this too. There we go. That's, that's less distracting, right? Thank you. I love technology. All right, um, so the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Um, that's where we were. How many of you think that's the best part of waking up? No, it's, it's really not, is it? No, the best part of waking up is waking up, being alive. Yeah, putting two feet on the ground, that kind of thing. Sure enough, yeah. Um, St. Paul tells us in our epistle for this first Sunday in Advent that we are, in a very real way, awake and morning people, regardless of what time you wake up uh, this morning to come to church. He tells us, the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than the hour we first believed. That hour has come for you to wake from sleep. Uh, our inherent love of Spiritual darkness leaves us in a deep spiritual sleep. Anybody ever hear somebody named Martin Luther? Yeah. Martin Luther writes this. He says, Now note the analogy between natural sleep and spiritual sleep. And he goes on. Martin Luther had a way of doing that. Going on. Yeah. <laughs> you thought I was long-winded or I am long-winded? I'm just going to quote a little bit of what Luther says here about the the analogy between natural and spiritual sleep. The sleeper sees nothing about him. He is not sensitive to any of earth's realities. In the midst of them, he lies as one dead, useless, as without power or purpose. Though having life in himself, he is practically dead to all outside. Moreover, his mind is occupied not with realities, but with dreams wherein he beholds mere images, vain forms of the real, and he is foolish enough to think them true. 
But when he wakes, these illusions or dreams vanish. Then he begins to occupy himself with realities. Phantoms are discarded. Anybody ever been there? Sleeping, dreaming, thinking, hey, yeah, wow, it seems so real. But then you woke up and you realize that you're not on some beach in somewhere, right? You're, you're still here. Okay. Then he says about the spiritual life. The ungodly individual sleeps. He is, in a sense, dead in the sight of God. He does not recognize, is not sensitive to the real spiritual blessings extended him through the gospel. He regards them as valueless. For these blessings are only to be recognized by the believing heart. They are concealed from the natural man. The ungodly individual is occupied with temporal, transitory things such as luxury and honor, which are to eternal life and joy as dream images are to flesh and blood creatures. End of quote. Luther says it's time for us to, to not be spiritually asleep. That, that that's a, a dream. It's, it's phantom. It's not real. These things of luxury and honor, these transitory things, they're temporal. Don't be occupied with those things. It's, it's time to wake up. But by nature, we are all creatures of darkness, people of the night. Our sinful nature, our sinful desire is, is to walk in, in darkness. How is it that St. Paul spoke of these things? Okay? Where the deeds of, of darkness, sexual immorality, debauchery, Dissension, jealousy. No, oh, no, I hope that doesn't sound like your Thanksgiving day or anything that way with the, you know, things going on in the dark. Maybe the dissension part in some households. But that's who we are in our sinful nature, our sinful flesh, being asleep. In that darkness. That's what we confess, right? That's us. It's our, our sins of our words. Our thoughts. And even our deeds. Did, did you just confess those sins because it was words on the page before you? Or, or did you confess those sins because that's what you did this week? That's who you were <coughs> this last week? in your sins of thought, word, and deed. That's who we are, isn't it? That's us when we're slumbering. Wake up! It's time to wake up! The advent of Christ comes to us. And, and he says... The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. It's time to wake up from your slumber. Salvation is nearer now than the hour you first believed. And so we are called to, to walk in the light. To walk as in the daytime. And he tells us about that too. Again in our epistle lesson. You shall not commit adultery. Hey, how many of you married people, husbands, wives, how many of you did not commit adultery this week? Only a few hands going up. That's kind of scary for your pastor right now. Okay, do you have to be married to not commit adultery? That's right. So how many of you non-married people did not commit adultery this week? Wonderful. Walking in the light. You shall not murder. Before you think that's too easy, remember scripture says if you've hated your brother in your heart, you've committed murder against him. You did not steal. I know you wanted that last item on Black Friday, but the person in front of you got it. You didn't go and you took, take it from their hands and push them down and run. You didn't do that, did you, Rita? <laughs> Just checking. 
to walking in the light. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Praise be to God that we can walk in his light because we're not sleeping any longer. We're awake. We're awake in Christ Jesus. In fact, he tells us to do what? To put on, how is it? To put on the armor of life. Let us behave decently and clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ? In the waters of baptism, he clothes us with his righteousness. We were speaking about that in Bible class this morning, that, that great exchange, that happy exchange. He takes our sin, he gives us his righteousness. The words of the gospel. You hear the good news that Jesus died for you. He took your sin and he gave you his righteousness so that we can be awake, awake in Christ Jesus. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. He has come near to us as we spoke with the children. Three advents. He come near to us as he took on flesh and blood. Jesus offered himself to the Father for our sacrifice once and for all. We celebrate Jesus' life, again, his coming at Christmas. And we've been clothed with Christ Jesus. Our identity was changed as we're baptized, clothed with his righteousness. We've died to sin, we walk in the newness of life. In the humble forms of bread and wine, Jesus comes to us again, again today. His advent is before us. He's coming with his body and his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, the strengthening of our faith, and the life and salvation. While the world spends the, the weeks before Christmas gratifying the desires of the flesh, we put on the armor of light. We live not in the love of ourselves, but in faith toward God. It's time to wake up. It's time to live and walk in this light. It's time to share the light with others so that they too will celebrate the advent, the coming of the Christ child. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting.